Hello, my name is Angela Loomis, and in this presentation, I will be talking about occupational exposures to bloodborne pathogens. Where are bloodborne pathogens found? Bloodborne pathogens are found in many occupations. Predominantly, they are found in hospitals, doctor's offices, dentists, many healthcare occupations, tattoo parlors, and law enforcement. Occupational exposures. Workers in healthcare fields are predominantly exposed to bloodborne pathogens, more so than most occupations. These exposures can be from needle sticks, any contact with blood through mucous membranes, contact through open sores and cuts, and several other ways. What are bloodborne pathogens? Bloodborne pathogens are pathogenic microorganisms that are present in human blood and can cause disease in humans. These pathogens include the human immunodeficiency virus, also known as HIV, hepatitis C and hepatitis B, which will be referred to as Hep B and Hep C, syphilis, and viral hemorrhagic fever also known as Ebola or the Marburg virus. Every day, hundreds of healthcare workers are exposed to bloodborne pathogens. Many of these exposures are not classified as significant exposures, which, with most cases, not resulting in the healthcare worker acquiring the disease, which with they may have been infected or exposed to. In a six-year study that was conducted, the following results were found. 230 exposures were reported. 140 were considered significant. Needle and syringe assemblies accounted for 59% of the exposures. Butterfly needles, or lancets, accounted for 8% of the exposures. And of the 230 exposed, 77 were exposed to HIV, and only 27 of these were considered significant. How is the risk determined? A risk is determined by two factors, the type of bloodborne pathogen that was, the worker was exposed to and the route of exposure. Certain types of pathogens that occupational workers are exposed to are hepatitis B, which there is a 1 in 3 chance of acquiring this with the source known, hepatitis B, a 1 in 30 chance with the source unknown, Hepatitis C, a 1 in 30 to a 1 in 100 chance of acquiring this, and HIV with a 1 in 300 chance of acquiring this pathogen. Also, the risk is determined by the route of exposure. The needle size, a larger gauge, is riskier than a smaller gauge needle. The needle type, a hollow, being riskier than a solid needle. The needle with syringe of fluid, which is riskier than a needle alone a deep puncture fluid rejection being riskier than a deep puncture without fluid, riskier than a superficial puncture, which is riskier than a superficial scratch with bleeding, which is riskier than a mucous membrane exposure, which is, which is riskier than a non-intact skin exposure, which is riskier than just the aerosol of blood exposure. In a study that was conducted from 16,922 healthcare workers um, exposed to blood in the occupation, out of these 16,922 healthcare workers exposed to the bloodborne pathogens, clerical workers were exposed 1% of the time, dental workers also 1% of the time, housekeeping and maintenance were exposed 3% of the time, and student help, such as those on internships and volunteers, were exposed 4% of the time. Other workers were exposed 5% of the time. Technicians were exposed 15% of the time. Physicians were exposed 28% of the time. And nurses were exposed 44% of the time to bloodborne pathogens. In conclusion, the risk of acquiring HIV and other bloodborne diseases through occupational exposure is very low, and the risk of acquiring these diseases can be further reduced by adopting safer work practices. Some recommendations should be using all personal protective equipment properly and the correct personal protective equipment, covering all open sores and wounds when working with patients or in an area where bloodborne pathogens 
may be present. Using self-sheathing needle, needles, proper needle capping techniques, and proper disposal of needles into appropriate sharp containers.